Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is April 22nd, 2024. Anthony, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Oh, yeah, hi. My name is Anthony Pena. Um, I was the rhythm guitarist for Defiled Souls back in like the early 2000s. So it was me. Oof, this is going to be a rough one. William Valentine was bass. Uh, Mike Centeno was lead guitar. Aisha Centeno was lead vocals. And Danny was our drummer. From what I remember, I, if that's it, oh, yeah, I think it was Danny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Well, well, thank you for uh, uh, for participating in this, Anthony, and um, and excited to hear all about your musical history. Uh, first, though, let's take it back and um, hear about your family history and background, whatever you might know about it and how your family ended up in the Bronx. From what I remember, all the adults were from Dominican Republic. They moved to New York for what reasons I will never know. What was it? I was born in Manhattan. I lived in DR. I lived in Florida, pretty much south of New York on the East Coast. Um. We moved around a lot. Like it yeah. was just, I think it was the the thing to do for poor people. Because we started out, I remember living in a church when I was a baby. Okay. And it was yeah. a Jewish church. And I always heard the bells go off because of the clock tower. Yeah. In my head, the resonance was just like, I hear everything else through this bell. What the fuck is this? <laughs> then from there, my parents split up. We moved to the Bronx. Soundview. Oh fuck! What a nightmare. How how old were you? I remember moving there. I had just came back from DR, and I started pre K. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, and then it was back and forth up until like the eighth grade. I see. Back and forth between the Bronx and DR, or other places too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was like a hot mess. I never knew where I was gonna go next. It was more like. What are we gonna do with him? I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Where in the DR? Like, did you have family that you go to? It was near the capital. That's all I remember. Because okay, they, they okay, didn't okay. teach me anything. They they just just left me there. Yeah. So I was yeah. growing up watching Popeye in black and white, and going out to the village to get stuff done. And I had a pet tiger, which wow. wasn't a pet. It was like a companion. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I got choked out by a boa constrictor that was like twice my length. Yeah. Because sure. um, they trained me to be militant and how yeah. to survive, how to build a house, how to hold down the land, all that important shit that means nothing in America. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was learning like all the languages. Like I taught myself English and Spanish. I taught my mom English. Yeah. While doing homework in elementary school. Wow. And the whole time they had me like switching classes between normal classes and ESL. But the thing was, when I was in ESL, I was explaining to the Spanish kids what the English teacher was saying. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a complete clusterfuck. I fucking, like my entire time in this country, I fucking hated it up until yeah. I got my hands on a guitar. I see. How old were you when you got your hands on a guitar around? I was 16. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so. Before that, what um a bunch of broken instruments that my parents kept giving me because they really didn't care. Yeah. Like the whole time they was telling me you're never gonna make it. I'm like, uh before my final breath, I will. Yeah. Wow. So when I was 16, I was already friends with Aisha because she was literally like two, three blocks away from me. And her friend was a block away. I had a crush on her for like seven years. That didn't go anywhere. And we would meet up at the same bus stop to the point where I used to walk them to school. Then I would walk myself to school because I did not want to go to fucking school in Manhattan. It's like the plan was go to aviation, become a blue angel, get the fuck out of here. Uh-huh. That did not work. I got like three points short on the math for the Navy to get accepted to the Air Force. And I was just like, fuck this goddamn. It was like every single time I met the quota, they was just like, no. You can't do this. Wow. I'm like, all right. Wow. So, 
I picked up the guitar. I started hanging out with Aisha's boyfriend, which was Mike. And he showed me like every sound I wanted to hear, period. It was Black Sabbath, Metallica, Nirvana, and like a couple other hardcore bands. Yeah. And all I can think of is if I can just write one fucking single, I can get the fuck out of here. Because that was the yeah. mission statement was to get, I wanted to go back to my grandma's house in DR. That was yeah. sweet. All this other shit has been a bitter struggle. So then we form a band, and that's when I convinced my friend in high school, Will, you gotta learn how to play bass. We gotta do this. We gotta fucking do this. For months, I was nagging him and his mom, like, please get this man a bass. I swear to God, I don't care if I have to sell my soul. This shit is gonna happen. It has to happen. <laughs> so then he gets the bass, like, I think a year later after nagging him, we were in the same high school. And then we started showing up to Mike's house and we started practicing. We started like getting the hang of a power chord and playing on time and playing with a drummer. And then he starts writing lyrics. Aisha starts writing lyrics. And there was one practice where I was just like, oh shit, this can actually happen. Yeah. We just need a drummer. And then that's when the band started forming. And it fell on me to be the manager. I don't know how this happened. I guess it's because I was the only one who started working in the third grade from then yeah. on. Because in the third grade, I helped my aunt run her business with legal work at home. So I was like answering phones, doing the facts, typing up reports, and then running into the city to print out documents that lawyers needed for real estate, I guess. I don't even know what the hell I was doing. I was just doing it. Yeah. Then... um. I started managing the band. I had to collect all the phone numbers to all the places that let bands play in their spot, like the venues. I see, yeah. This is where the bullshit began. <laughs> in, between, in between jobs, dropping out of high school, moving in with Aisha and Mike, into we, we went from Soundview to Brook Ave. And that's where the... Spinal Tap slash Joe's Apartment era in my life began. <laughs> Killing roaches while changing strings, thinking to myself, I know I said anything, but I didn't mean like this. I didn't. This. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so we, we get that. We start, Our first show was at the Savoy. Uh-huh. I think Aisha paid for that. And that was crazy. That It, it was like, oh, nobody's coming. No one's showing up. And right towards the end, all these people just popped up and it was a mosh pit and the shit was crazy. It was, we ended up paying more than we had to because we kind of fucked the place up. Oh, it was, it was great. <laughs> and that, that was with Go to Mentis, I think, right? When remember? they showed up, they brought their peoples and that's what was the difference because we got there early setting everything up. And I was just yeah. like, I was a nervous fucking wreck. I was just like, please, <laughs> if there is a God, make this work. <laughs> wow wow so um uh just to um uh backtrack a little bit um mm -hmm. uh how long had you been into like you know heavier music before you this picked the up the craziness. guitar this is the craziness know. i've been into all forms of music since i was a kid but yeah. Before I picked up the guitar, I always had a voice in the back of my head saying, make it heavier. And I'm yeah. like, how the fuck am I supposed to do that? Yeah. So I started off with Spanish music, uh -huh. church music, video game music the most. That was like yeah. the underground. I remember playing Atari 2600 and writing music in my head like, why does this work so good? Then um, I got into R&B uh -huh. during elementary school up until like high school. I'm like, this isn't heavy enough. Yeah. But what does it need? Like, I kept hearing this fucking low B. Yeah, yeah. I kept yeah. hearing that heavy chug chug. And this was before corn. Yeah. This was like before all of that stuff. So I'm like, what the fuck is in my head? I can't get it out. And I don't know what the fuck is going on. Because every time I'm playing guitar, I'm like, I'm missing something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So like, all right, fine. I started detuning. I started using multiple game pedals. I was like, this isn't it. Whatever it is I'm trying to achieve, I don't have it yet. Yeah. So I kept going. And then I heard corn for the first time and thought, oh my God, this is it. Ah. What the fuck are they doing? 
what yeah. the fuck is making this sound? And then I found I've been in seven stream, Steve Vai, and that's when everything came out like this is it. This is what the fuck I've been waiting for. Wow. Even with the piano, the piano only goes but so low. And then it's like yeah. to make it lower, you gotta add stuff. Yeah. So with the seven string, like I got this thing 16 years ago. Wow. Wow. <laughs> hey, it's in great shape. Yeah. Everybody who worked on it was just like, how do you maintain this thing? I'm like, I don't. It maintains me. Yeah. Like, the gig bag I bought with it, 16 years old. This shit. Like, birds can move into it if they wanted to. This thing has <laughs> been through. Yeah, this is <laughs> shit is shot. So I got to yeah, yeah, yeah. over it to keep it in tune. So, but I didn't get to play the seven string until like 10 years after the band. I see, I see, I see, I see. Like, I, at first it was a cheap six string that never stayed in tune. Then I got my first Ibanez from Mike, and I couldn't let it go. Yeah. I was stuck. I'm like, floating bridge, the Marzio pickups. Paid like two, three hundred bucks for it. I didn't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's where, like, it was like slowly ramping up. Because when we moved into the apartment, Aisha bought us a bunch of equipment. Uh, wow. I got a Jackson Kelly, because I wanted to be like Marty Friedman with Megadeth. Yeah, yeah. Then I had... uh crate two by 12 and to this day i still have aches and pains of carrying that shit throughout the city <laughs> showing up to shows like bro if i go through another flight of stairs i'm gonna lose my shit <laughs> Knees, like my legs are just shot from like when i was 18 19 carrying it up and down the subway right oh my fucking god bro first it's the the five flights of stairs out the building then it's the long ass walk to the two train because nothing's close in new york uh-huh. Down the stairs or the escalator that doesn't work, waiting for the express that is not on time yep. to be stuck, like sitting on your amp because there's nowhere to sit on the train. Uh-huh. Hoping you get to the show on time and don't get canceled out completely. Bringing the shit out the stairs to the venue, up more fucking stairs because some venues had to be on the third floor, if not the basement. <laughs> Then Mike's crazy ass with his four by twelve in head, it was just like we're we're not gonna make this. We're not gonna. This is this is too much. We <laughs> fucked up somewhere. Wow. Um, so, yeah. So uh, so do you remember you you mentioned you know the first time you heard Corn? What was the first song or the first album by Corn? It was Blind. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It was okay, Blind because a friend of mine had all these albums. Like he had. Corn, Ministry, um, Megadeth, like a whole bunch of other, a bunch of hardcore bands I don't remember, like Front Two, Four Two, Agnostic Front, uh -huh. all those bands, everything from the nineties, hardcore. Wow. And then I just went through all his CDs, and yeah. when I got to Corn, I was just like, if the riffs aren't fucking me up, the lyrics are. Uh huh. I was stuck. I'm just like, this is home. This is what yeah. makes sense to me. So I started learning corn stuff on a sixth string, and I'm like, this isn't right. What am I missing? The seventh string. The D2 yeah. seventh string is what I've been hearing since, since birth. Wow. And I think um, it also to music, like church music on the piano, organ playing. Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah, sure, sure. So... It was like a combination of stuff. It wasn't one any one thing. Like the, my level of patience was just God mode at that point. It was like, all right, when I got this thing, that's a whole nother story, but we're gonna put it in anyways. I when I couldn't afford studio time, I would go to Guitar Center, 14th yeah. Street, and that was my experimentation. That was my lab. I would put stuff together by myself. I would sit there and be like, I can't be too loud and I can't take too long because the <laughs> The employees yep. hated that shit. They, they're they're yep. some of the most bitterest motherfuckers on the planet. I'm just like, you hate your existence and you got to bring it to work. <laughs> Why are you here? Uh, so, were, were, there, were there any music stores in the Bronx that you would go to? There was one that I went to the longest, but then they shut down. They were on Castle Hill. Oh, Castle Hill Music or something like that. I yep. think. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When, ah, okay. When I started going there, I had bought like two, three guitars from them, all different, like different features, 
but they were all six strings. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, I could dive bomb like Steve Vai, but I can't chug like corn. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the, that was the balance I wanted. I wanted the flexibility of Steve Vai with the heaviness of corn. That's where my music is at. That's, that's my whole shit. So after they closed down, I was just like, oh, what the fuck am I going to do now? Because uh-huh. the internet wasn't a thing. People don't want to understand. Shit was so much harder before the internet came out the way it is now. For sure. So there was this weird gap where I was playing guitar, but I wasn't playing guitar. I was in the band, but I wasn't in the band. We did a whole two years hardcore of just, we're going to the studio, and we're going to do some shows, and we're going to make an album. Like We was progressively getting there. And then yeah. we met. The, we met some producer guy that had the ins to get us there. Because one of the times that he booked the studio time for us, we met Queen Latifah coming out the studio. Wow. I got my guitar on my back. They're scaffolding in front of the building. I'm hanging off like a dumbass, swinging back and forth. And <laughs> she, just, <laughs> she just comes out looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble now. But... Nothing, nothing happened. She was just like, how you doing? You know, have fun. Don't break shit. And I was just like, wait, is this Queen of Oh, shit! I spent my whole life watching on TV. You tell me this is where she hangs out? <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, I've wow. met a lot of famous people following my guitar. Yeah. In New York, just, just I'm going to go buy strings today. Next thing I see, Chris Rock hanging out in fucking uh, Starbucks. Incognito wow. trying to attract attention. It was crazy, bro. <laughs> I forgot how many people I've met because it was just like the most random thing. Yeah, yeah. So then what else? So like the whole musical journey, I'm the only musician in my family. I see, I see. Everybody else is either a professional in their craft or straight out junkie. Yeah, yeah. Like I had four uncles were doctors that ran a hospital in DR. My fifth uncle was probably the oldest. He ran a Harley Davidson factory. And then my uncles here, I don't know, they were just burnouts. Yeah, yeah, like, sure, sure, sure. Everybody who, all the adults who moved to New York, they were all burnouts. They were all just there to party hardy, burn my inheritance, and then leave me for dead. Yeah. And that was just like the whole thing about being Dominican. Most people don't understand. These are some of the most evil motherfuckers on the planet. So then the day my grandmother passed away, I was about to finish high school. But then I said, fuck it. This piece of paper is not going to get me what I want. Yeah. I need a job. I need my own place. I need peace. And I'm like, the guitar is the only thing that's going to get me there. So in a dream, I seen her like come to me as a light. And she was like, keep doing what the fuck you're doing. Watch her back. And then she disappeared. 12 hours later, I get the news that she passed away. And I'm thinking... Wow. That same summer, the whole family turned against me and disowned me. Not once, but twice. Wow. I'm there like, how so much fuel you're giving me right now to keep going? Because I've been homeless since the second grade because of my mom and what happened between me and my dad and the way they handled it was bad. Yeah. So it was just like, my dad had sexually abused me when I was a kid. I yeah. got over it. I just wanted us to be a family, but that couldn't happen. The females in the family took it personal and started taking it out on me. And I'm like, your math is wrong. What the fuck? Yeah, You're not yeah. going to do this. You don't have to deal with this shit. You don't even know what it's like to be hunted. Yeah. So get over that. The whole time they're having me trying to go against him. And he was barely in my life. Because after yeah. that happened, it was just this. Yeah, for sure. So I'm stuck with the females that don't shut the fuck up. I'm trying to learn how to play guitar and study music. And that was just like most of my time in New York. Wow. Wow. Um, where Did you have to spend like a lot of time like in shelters or things like that or just moving around to a lot of different people's homes? People's homes, the bench, sometimes the park. Every now yeah. and then I'd get to a friend and be like, yo, can I spend the night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. There was so many yeah. times my mom would change the locks on the doors, and I'm just like, it don't get more metal than this. Like, my life is a fucking corn song. <laughs> yeah, 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 for, for real. For so, real. So, like, um, when the whole new metal thing kicked off, I felt like, yep, these are my people. This is where I'm supposed yeah. to be. This yeah. band is going to get me there. 
I'm going to be on tour with everybody I've been looking at through fucking Guitar World the last 10 fucking years. And it just, no, no, no. Damn. <laughs> this, is, this is what fucked us up the most, above all. I had a dream that I picked up the phone and everything was shot to shit. And for the whole week, I'm like, what the fuck could happen in one phone call that could be shot to shit? I had that dream on Sunday. Friday morning, I'm picking up the phone to me, Aisha, and Mike being fired from our job separately, one after another on the fucking answer machine. Wow. I'm like, we're supposed to be playing CBGBs. How the fuck are we going to pull this off without a house? Because I didn't feel like going back home. For real. They didn't want to go back home. Wow. How are we going to have a band without a fucking roof over our head? We how, had how'd you all survive at that point? Would you all Full do? reset. Full reset. That was the only way. Because it was just like, I got to go back home to this bitch and deal with this shit all over again. Now, the only difference is I got less clothes and more gear. And yeah, I'm sleeping yeah. on the couch. Wow. Then I had to give some of the gear back to Aisha because I never paid her off because things never worked out. Yeah, I yeah. So many part-time jobs not finishing my diploma. Yeah. The thing with diploma was... I was going to school for aviation, but then two years in, they canceled the program. So I was going to school in Manhattan for nothing. So I'm wow. traveling 30 plus miles each way daily just to sit in a classroom and be like, what the fuck? I'm not even being babysat. I'm just here. Yeah. They wouldn't let me leave the school to transfer to another school because then the school would get shut down. The school got shut down anyway, and I couldn't get my diploma. Wow. So I graduated two years late with extra credit like I, I graduated with like 72 credits like, yeah this shit's only 60 what the f wow what 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 school was that park west high school oh uh, okay okay man my first yeah. day in school a pregnant lady got shot for her snikes wow freshmen's wow that school went through so many staff changes. It got to a point where I was just like, I don't even care if I get on a plane. I already got the plane experience from the the, the virtual machine that they had there. Yeah. That's yeah. how you know how to fly a plane. Wow. But to be certified and be a pilot, ah, fuck that. I don't give a shit. Wow. I lost that thing after the whole Navy thing. I was just like, I can't be a Blue Angel. Fuck this. This is stupid. But the guitar was always there. Yeah. Wow. Like, no matter what happens, the guitar is always there. Like, I remember breaking up with my girlfriend because she was that much of a distraction to me. Yeah. When it came to playing, like, I got to write a song. You want to hang out and do all these drugs? I don't even give a fuck about. It. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Um, so before you went to Park West High School, did you go to, like, any other high schools in the Bronx close to mm -hmm. where you lived? That was the only one. I couldn't one. go to anywhere. I couldn't be in my zone school because of the overcrowding. Ah, uh, I think I was uh -huh. supposed to go to Stevenson. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. And I've made friends from Stevenson because they lived in my projects. And I'm yeah. like, I don't want to go there. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? Where am I supposed to go? Yeah. Wow. And and re remind me, which projects did your, your, your um, mom's apartment? I Rosedale. guess right. Rosedale. Rosedale. Okay, okay, okay. I see. I see. But you were kind of just like in and out of there. It's not like you live there On paper it seems like i've been there for a really long time but in yeah. actuality, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. i see wow um so do you remember the first like uh show you went to maybe maybe you played in the first show you went to but but maybe mm -hmm. you went to something before aisha took me to see nine inch nails and marilyn manson with a perfect circle in madison square garden ah it was, <laughs> it was game over it's like you can't tell me there's life better than this I just seen Marilyn Manson and fucking Trent Reznor sing Starfuckers together on the same stage. Wow. That, wow. That was better than watching the video on TV. Cause I'm like, you, you don't expect that. And then I was a Tool fan long before Perfect Circle. So when I see this tall, lanky person walking on stage and like Leon Flores, I'm like, hold on a second. I know that voice. No. <laughs> it can't be. And then they did a Tool song. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Lost wow. my fucking mind. After that, I did not care. All I wanted to do was music. Yeah. To the point where after high school, I became an AV tech slash computer business owner to get closer to the music scene in New York. Uh, okay, okay. I see. I see. Wow. Um, 
were you already playing guitar when you went to that um Marilyn Manson Nine Inch Nails yeah. show? Yeah, you I already think that was guitar. like during the first year of us being a band because we didn't move in together right away. That was part okay. Of that. I we were, see. Yeah, we were still in the projects, still dealing with our parents' shit, our own shit, and the rest of the world while writing music, drinking beers, like listening to Black Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And what 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 was like the initial sound of defiled souls what were y'all going for half metallica half nirvana with death metal vocals and singing that's right that's right <laughs> and 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 aisha she'd wear like cheerleading outfits and oh my like fucking that, right? god all right so part of me walking her to school she was going to cathedral high school that's the name of the fucking school it was cathedral high school on east 59th and lexington yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, she was part of the marching band, and I was just like, so sexy. She knew how to drum. She yeah. had all the patterns, all the step beats, and then her friends too. And I'm like, I'm following you guys all the way. I don't care how sick this cold makes me because for some reason, all their marching days fell on the coldest fucking days in New York. Like it's fucking snowing, and you guys are out here. All right, <laughs> I'm in the box. Fuck it, I'll be sick later. Wow. Um, so why don't you talk a little more about um, like where you all would rehearse and rehearsal space mm. and things like that with Defiled Souls? So it started out in each other's bedrooms. Yeah. And then we made it to Funkadelics. And that's where like my knowledge of gear started growing. Because oh, okay. before that, all I had was this five watt Dean Markley. Yeah. A six string strat and an Arion distortion pedal. And that to me was everything. Yeah, sure, sure. So when we went to Funkadelics, it was all about four by 12 cabs, tube heads, multiple speakers fucking everywhere, and the PA. And I was just like, oh shit. I was, it was, <laughs> wow, okay. And we was there for like two years, but we would bounce to other places. Yeah, sure. Either didn't stay open, was too expensive, or we was invited from another band to hang out with them. Ah, uh, okay. It's okay, kind of yeah, like, yeah. well, can we afford Funkadelics this week? No. I guess we're going to crash with somebody else just to get this out. I'm like, all right, fine. We made friends with um, co workers, Guitar Center in Queens. And that was the whole death metal scene right there. That was just uh, okay. everybody was there. Everybody yeah. like, um, my favorite band was M17 and Proof of Purchase. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Those two, because for some reason, I guess them being Spanish playing hardcore, it was just like, yeah, these uh -huh. are they know uh -huh. what the is. Let's go. And I was just learning from them, just watching everything. Like, I gotta do what to my guitar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I these strings, you gotta get the EMGs, and you gotta get the Marshall 8800, and then sometimes you gotta throw a 900 in there. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> So a lot of that stuff didn't make sense until I found where Guitar Center was. I see, I see. Because they, they wasn't always there. When that yeah. grand opening that week on 14th Street, I was just like, I have arrived. <laughs> this is it. I'm going to figure everything that everybody's talking about through this. Because Guitar World wasn't enough. The books I bought, it wasn't enough. Like, I never had a formal teacher. It was just me late up at night watching 120 Minutes mimicking everything I saw to all the songs I like. Like, oh, that's how you play Enter Sandman. For real? For then, real. Uh, it was just like a rabbit hole. Because Metallica was like the, the opening band. Then there was Pantera. Uh -huh. Everything in the 90s. Everything in the 90s just hit me in the face. And I'm like, all right, this is like old stuff. But then the new metal is where it was like that. This is that. This is... Like, I still listen to Static X. Yeah, sure. Like, I, I don't care. I, I'm on the train like, mm hmm I, <laughs> I actually was about to apply to be the lead singer of a Static X tribute band, but I'm not young, and the yeah. traveling voice is, that's fried. I can't yeah. scream anymore. That's yeah, it. yeah. Fuck, I, I know. I really hard, it's hard on the vocal cords, for sure, like. <laughs> Yo, I don't know how Aisha <laughs> did it so long, too. But... You know what the crazy thing is? She was my drinking buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and we used to get 
fucking destroyed. Like we had no concern for our well-being or our future the way we used to drink. And I'm just yeah. like, yeah, we can't keep this shit up. My insides hurt in ways I didn't think was possible. We was working at oh um TCI. Yeah, that sounds familiar. What one of the colleges down by the west side on 30-something Street, we was in the book store of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a technology subject yeah. in college, and right? So she had already worked there a couple of times before, part-time, and it was my first time, and I was too reckless for that job. Oh, my God. One time we had liquor or poisoning from drinking too much after a, a show, I think it was at Bainbridge. Oh, at the uh, Black Thorn? Black Thorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah, that yeah. fucking place. Oh God, I have so many stories about that place. So one, we had a gig. It was one of the first times we opened up for the death metal bands. Okay. The, the extreme metal bands, like this shit, was terrifying to me because I'm like, I'm hearing shit I've never heard before, and these guys are in full control of it. What uh -huh. the fuck? They're not gonna like us. Uh -huh. Like I still can't form a proper bar code. These dudes are just like. <laughs> Do you remember some of the bands that were playing? No. Okay, okay, they, okay. They didn't they had albums and they had tour dates, but they didn't have like a website. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. It was it was it wasn't as tangible as it is now. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times it was just like bands we'd see every now and then. Yeah. And after that night, we had to go to work and that was like the first liquor poisoning I ever had. I couldn't stand up straight for shit. And I'm like, locked in, fuck it. You take me to the ambulance after I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were so fucked up, man. We were like, we was basically living like 80s hair metal bands the way we partied. <laughs> and it was was it all in the uh in the band apartment that you all would party mostly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause wow. it was just like, all right, time to go back to the bat cave, get your liquor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think was it, I was the only pothead. Yeah. And some of the other bands were on to more serious shit that I just never paid attention to. Like, I wasn't aware that they had their own addictions to other shit. Yeah, and that sure. was part of what broke things up because, oh, uh, leave it to a fucking cokehead to fuck up some good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, what are some of the other venues around the Bronx that you remember? You mentioned the Savoy. You mentioned the Blackthorn. Are there others that you would go to it was, or play I think at? it was I think there was one other one I don't remember but mostly it was Manhattan yeah Queens uh-huh there were times when we try to make it to Brooklyn and for some reason we just could never I think we did like maybe one or two shows in Brooklyn yeah and that was probably the most backbreaking shit ever because I forgot what train it was the R I think it was the R Okay, yeah. Because I remember we had to take the two to 42nd and then switch uh, there. Uh, okay, and it yeah, was like yeah, a yeah. three point. We left wow. two hours early because I'm like, bro, I'm tired now. I don't even know if I can stand when we get there. <laughs> I'm just sitting <laughs> on my fucking amp. I suck this. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And you're bringing, you're bringing all your gear oh with you on God. the train to every show, was, right? Oh, it was stupid. It was We just did shit so wrong. It was like, if I was to go back, I would do it differently to where we would play in the Bronx more, hosting our own events. I think that's what I we see, were missing. I see, I see. We was trying I to see. do everybody else's party instead of making it our own. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of times when we played on stage, we were stealing the fans. Yeah. It was like we had maybe 50, 60 people doing this. And then they'd go crazy for the people they did come to see. And I'd be like... Fuckers, you know you like those fucking kids. <laughs> um, what 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 are some of the venues you played in, in Manhattan and Queens? You remember the uh, you 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 said CBGBs already. Did we you, were supposed play to play once? CBGBs, but the night that we were supposed to play was the night they got shut down, and I was just like, "Oh, demonic wow. forces are at play here." Wow, we were supposed bad. to play that show. Wow. Wow. And, all the other um, places in Manhattan, I don't remember because it's a blur. Yeah, like, I yeah. remember making flyers and telling my teachers and my guidance counselor showed up to the one in Bainbridge. Wow. And that was the only support I ever had. Wow. Um, I remember one night in Bainbridge, 
I had a dream to get to have a 30 foot cable. And I'm like, I don't okay. care. We even fucking move around. I'm standing in front of the amp. There's like no space <laughs> on these stages. I'm like, all right, fuck it, bring 30 foot cable. We go to practice, we get the set list. We, we practice anywhere between two and four hours, sometimes not always sober, but we got through it. Yeah. And the night of, I just felt like fucking Super Saiyan. I'm like, I'm going to end up doing some shit tonight. I don't even care what it is. The second song, I think, was like one song I wrote that was hardcore enthusiast, but it was a lot of singing. So people had to wait to get to the hardcore part. Yeah. And something told me, you know what? It's a bar. There's barely any lights. Let me stand in the middle of the mosh pit and see what happens. Wow. Without missing a note, I'm just like, they picked me up and held me up while the mosh pit was going around. And I'm just literally just, oh, yeah, this is it. This is the other part of the dream I couldn't see because I'm staring at the fucking ceiling. Wow, that's crazy. Then if it wasn't that, it was everybody amazed at the fact that I'm burning 103 degree fever on stage and my pick is melting as I play. So the pick is like turning into dust and vapor in the light and it's all around me and I'm the only one that doesn't notice. Yeah. I would start (laughs) song one. By the fourth, fifth song, I'm playing on like the nubs of my fingertips because my nails are gone. Oh my care. god! I didn't wow. care. I didn't care. Fucking cheap ass picks. <laughs> wow. And I used to play like 13 gauge on standard tuning. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> it was whatever I could get to get the most out of my toe. Like I just yeah, need sure. Ass. Wow. But, yeah, like um. I'm trying to remember the shows in Brooklyn and Queens. And I don't even remember where we played in Queens. I just remember we played in Queens. Do you remember? Um, do you put, I don't know if it's, if, if it, yeah, it was probably still around. Castle Heights. Did, did you all ever play at Castle Heights? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a big, a big. That's probably the furthest show we did because of the travel. Yeah. Yeah, that'd take a long time to get to. Um, the stress. <laughs> Yeah. And what about um recordings? Did did you all do many recordings or any we recordings? Tried to. We tried yeah. to. Because that when we had the producer, mm-hmm. that's when the recordings came in play. And that's when okay. all of our weaknesses showed. Like I couldn't I see the time. I, my chord fingering sucked. But I'm only playing guitar for like third, fourth year. Yeah. Yeah, sure, <laughs> like, sure, sure. My nerves are just like, oh, I can't feel shit now. I'm I'm shot. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to the drums. I'm trying to take cues from everybody else. And I'm just like, my body is slowly failing me. And I can't tell anybody shit. Oh well. <laughs> um like, yeah, it oh, it was just weird listening back to the recordings because it was just like, that's us? Yes. Yeah. That's what we sound like. Oh man, I, what I needed was really a metronome, and I didn't know it. I see, I see, I see, yeah. Like, I learned everything the most ass backward, hardest way possible. It was so unconventional. Like, yeah. I, have to, I didn't even know I was out of tune. I just thought I was bending it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, well, you you were all self-taught, so, you know, it's like... Um, yeah, but yeah. it was when we got that producer guy, we met a lot of people through him, but it wasn't working because he was trying to turn us into something we weren't. We're like, we're a five-piece hard rock metal band yeah and you're going to make us sound like some smooth r&b easy listening band i see wow like what the fuck stop drinking the goddamn beers and eq this shit right there's two guitars Uh uh-huh and then the vocalist is doing light and dark vocals and the drummer doesn't stop and the bassist is flowing with him make this shit work yeah we ended up breaking it off with him because it was just, it was just like, it felt like a waste of time more than anything. Like, all right, the Starstrucks part is over. Now you're just pissing us off. Yeah, sure, And we sure. still don't have a deal. Where's yeah. the deal you keep talking about? We didn't come to you fucking asking for help. You came to us. Yeah. Wow. And, it was like, and then it was like the, the, the partying and it was like too many distractions. Yeah. Towards the end. Yeah. Um... Do you remember how, um, like, the band came up with the name Defiled Souls? Mike came up with it. Okay. And I remember him explaining it, and I was not paying attention. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> at that point, one, I didn't care what the fucking band was called. Two, I, I just yeah. didn't care. I didn't need to be in a band. I didn't care. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. It was just like, yeah, whatever. Go, fuck it. Absolutely. Um, and what about like the songwriting? How would that happen? With Everybody the came up with pieces and we just stitched it together. Wow. Because it was wow. just like, at one point, we wrote one riff where I used to singing. Then we wrote another riff where she's screaming. And then we kind of chopped it up where it was just like the Nirvana thing. Clean, dirty, clean, dirty. Uh-huh. And then the, some songs, it was just dirty straight through. Like, I was in love with the Black Album. And the song I couldn't stop playing in my head was Through the Never. I could oh, never play okay. the song straight. But I had finally picked up because the strumming to it started yeah. writing like but then I'm like, damn, we're gonna play this weird ass metal and fucking hardcore deathcore setting. I gotta throw some deathcore riffs in there. And I was like, I'm not that good. So how's the hardcore? And just started writing hardcore riffs around the I guess it was like hardcore riffs with folk riffs. Okay. Okay. That's what it broke down to. And I was just like, fuck it, fuck it. This is a C shape. I can't play it. So I'll just play the power chord and then Mike would play the, the folk chords. Yeah. So it's like you had the, the brightness from one guitar and the darkness from the other guitar. Okay, I see, I see. Wow. Um, so you mentioned uh, a couple of other Bronx bands already, like Go to Mentis and Proof of Purchase. Do you remember others that were like around at the scene at the time? It was them and M16. The ones that I remember them the most because we kept in contact with them the most. I see. On some like gatekeeping shit like now nah, we don't want to deal with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. You just sold gatekeeping. how many tickets? Like we're 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 we're, com we're competing with you in tickets. Yeah, we're not supposed to be competing. We're supposed to be working together. That's the scene. Yeah, yeah sure. And that was, that's, oh, there was no brotherhood. It was just I more see. like kill or be killed. If you didn't bring enough people, you don't get to come back. And I'm like, that's bullshit. We was here last week. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I think that's what killed the scene the most. It was just the mentality was absolute shit. Because everybody uh, else is white, but half of them were Spanish. Yep. Yep. We're the only actual dark-skinned band that was keeping up with everybody else. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm going to purposely steal your riff and make this shit better. <laughs> that was a good oh, man. My mentality was so fucking sick back then. <laughs> wow. Um, what, what was, like, the scene like in the rest of New York? Like, were you all, um, did you all feel accepted or Fuck no. did you have a difficult time <laughs> everywhere? Fuck no. huh? No, it was more like, where were the foreigners uh -huh. showing up to steal the show? I see. And yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. That's, it, it wasn't welcoming. That's why I yep. think I felt so nervous, because it was just like, the fuck are they about to do? I'm like, the fuck yeah. are they Just did it. We're about to do it, too. What the fuck? Yep. And I think between my antics and Aisha's guttural vocals, they were yeah. fucking fucked. They didn't think it was possible. I'm like, <laughs> y'all been doing this all y'all lives. We just started. Let's go. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow wow um and as far as uh like the different shows that defiled souls play um what are some that like stick out to you like some of the most memorable ones it would be the savoy uh bainbridge and there was one we did i think in manhattan i can't remember the spots we did in manhattan it was, they, they didn't stay open yeah, 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 a lot of small. A lot of places ended up shutting down as we got to them. Yeah. And or just didn't stick around because it wasn't being managed right. Yeah. And honestly, I think it was just a time where the city was just moving on from the underground, period. Yeah. Because it was getting harder and harder. Like towards the last six months of being a band, it was getting harder and harder to do shows. I'm just like, all right, I understand you're getting older and you fucked up and had like 10 kids by eight different women, but you can still do this. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah. The mentality, I guess, we were too young and they were too old. And then half the bands weren't even from New York. Yeah, sure. They were like from different countries coming over here to see what was going on. Yeah. Um, I think the underground scene died for a hot minute and then picked up again. But by that time, I was already gone. I was just, I was done. I was on yeah. my own thing, just getting my shit together. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Like, what was it? Um, Damn, Open the Denial? Open the Nile? Open the... Because they changed their name. Yeah. Open Denial? I think they started off as. 
Yeah, that sounds and right. Yeah, they changed it to open the denial. So, oh, this is some weird shit. And that that was like the second wave. That was after us, because I remember showing up to their shows like, damn, I can join them, but they really need me. Yeah, and they're yeah. only a few years younger. That was the crazy part. It's like I guess I would be their super senior. Yeah. And then I, at that point, I was stuck paying bills and just surviving alone. Because it was just like, I just can't rely on anyone. Everybody flakes. That's, that, to me, New York is just, it's fake as fuck. There's no yeah. real loyalty. There's no brotherhood. It's just everyone's lining up to get a ticket. That's it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. How did, uh, like, what all led to Defiled Souls, you know, breaking up and ending things? It was first, it was us getting fired. Then it was the whole relationship between Mike and Aisha falling apart. And then it was just the drug addictions that I think Mike and Will had. And then them kicking me out to go do their own thing. And I was just like, the fuck? Yeah. You could have took a break and reset it again. Like, this wasn't the end. You just made it that way. Yeah, you know, like, for sure. Like, whatever. And then it was definitely, it was definitely just losing that apartment. That's what that was like the 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 hair that broke the camel's back. <laughs> everything Absolutely. else, was, everything else was just all the hidden shit coming to surface. Yeah, yeah. So, mm. um, and what did you like? What did you end up doing musically after? defiled souls i mean obviously you're still very much into uh uh into music now but talk about your journey since defiled souls where all it's brought you um and where you're at now after defiled souls after i got kicked out i spent four years in oblivion yeah like i had guitar there but i couldn't play because of all the memories and I then see. i was trying to get my own band together but all i could find was the junkie pretending to be a rock star I and that see, was almost 20 years of wasted time. Yeah. So then, what was it? I moved out the last time. I was living on my I was living on my own with girlfriend at time that really, oh my God, fucking dead weight all the way. I was trying to get it together. I started building my studio at home. Yeah. I started collecting gear, used shit, wherever I can get it from off of MySpace. Uh, layaways from pawn shops and then just kept going on my own but I can't never find anyone with my same drive I everybody see. was just just mixing coke with other shit and buying shit and not doing shit with it and I'm just there like I don't need you I need your gear more than you at this point yeah and after that I just went solo yeah like I just started putting stuff on the internet I started doing things on YouTube and social media because I just didn't see the point in trying to be in a band where I'm buying the gear, reviewing the gear, fucking writing the songs, looking for the music theory to make sure it's right. Like, the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So it was after that four year period, I ended up moving back to my mom's house and that's when it restarted all over again. So it was okay. like, I don't give a fuck what you gotta say. I'm playing this fucking guitar. I don't yeah. care. Learn every single fucking style by myself. I'm gonna get this done. Yeah. And that was when the gatekeeping started because I couldn't play for a church. They didn't want me to play with them. I see. I didn't get into school because I wasn't one of the rich kids. Uh-huh. Um I tried learning how to read music and they used that against me in every way for perform. But I'm like, I'm playing the fucking song that I hear it. How is that not good enough? Yeah. Like, you don't yeah. play music by looking at it. Yeah. So years of that shit, I just got tired and said, fuck it. I'm just going to do the internet thing because that's what's taken off. Yeah. And I started doing covers on YouTube. And the first three YouTube accounts got canceled because apparently Dominicans aren't allowed to play metal or do covers. And it, it, the cancel culture started picking up. So I had red flag on everything. Everything. Wow. Covers, mega death covers. Pantera covers that was super sensitive. Oh my god! Then white wow. boys do not see any dark skinned person playing their fucking music. Like, uh -huh. if it wasn't for a black man, he wouldn't be playing the fucking guitar. You asshole. That's right. Wow. 
my music career didn't start picking up until I left New York. I see. I see. Yeah. Like I'm, yeah. everything I did in New York that failed is working in Philly. Wow. Like right now I'm jamming with musicians that are from around the world. And I'm like, yeah. you're from Brazil and you're hanging out here and I get to play with you. That's awesome. Fuck New York. <laughs> that would never happen over there. Yeah. And I thought it was strange because all the musicians I did like were from Philly. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing here? You're not going to make it here. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. Like, you're wasting your time. Go back home or go somewhere else. It's not working here. Then, um, what was it the last two years? Yeah. I've been playing everywhere. Like open mics, under the bridge, in the park, in the wow. library. I did a show in the supermarket. <laughs> Wow. While living in the shelter. Wow. While living out of my car, while living on a bench, living out of a garage, living with the wrong people. Like right now I'm in a in a transitional and I, I'm just, I don't know what the fuck to do to get out of here. I'm going to find a way out. It's just this yeah. my nature. But even when I was in the shelter, I had a laptop, a guitar and an interface. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> gonna fucking happen i don't care if it happens the day after i die it's gonna fucking happen yeah um but yeah but like right now i got like every other day i can do a show just by getting on the train and going to one of the venues yeah and i'm like this is the way new york should have been yeah because this is like i'm not even like i was it i got tw tipped 20 bucks to sing my own version of a happy birthday song Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Bar. And all I did was show up. I wasn't even the main attraction because the yeah. main attraction was a band from the city, but their lead Cora player was like 72nd in a long line of Cora players from Africa. I'm just wow. like, it's all on my YouTube. They That's went cool. in. Wow. And I'm like, I'm learning. Everything I wanted to learn about music, hanging out with these dudes in Philly. That's awesome. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> wow. So what 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 kinds of stuff do you generally gravitate towards playing now? It's like dark music. Yeah. That's the only way I can describe it because I take everything I feel and turn it into a song. Yeah. Because it's like I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia, dementia, depression. I'm still dealing with claustrophobia and CSPD from all the shit I've been through. And I'm just like, I just got to play. I just said, it's going to come out. Yeah, sure, sure. So I, I said, it's heavy metal influenced. Yeah, sure. I don't know. How to, I don't know what to call it. I really don't. I've been trying to call it something for the last two years. And I'm just like, listen, I'm just a bum that plays guitar. That's it. <laughs> and i've played like right now i'm playing inside of churches yeah when the whole time i was in new york i wanted to be part of the church band to learn the fucking music now i'm in church playing my music and i'm just like wow All right, we'll, play. we'll play okay wow and everybody's is like everybody's the same way like we've never heard the guitar do that before and i'm just like you don't listen to guitar yeah yeah <laughs> Like this is a fixed bridge. Wait till I get one, wait till I get the floating bridge model of this. Yeah. I miss my whammy bar. <laughs> um so you know, I guess looking back at uh your time in Defiled Souls, um how would you say like it shaped you musically? Ooh. It put me in the right direction. Yeah. Like it, it was just everything was there. I just had to keep going. Yeah. And every like every goal or milestone, like I would have an idea in my head, and then something would happen. I'd be like, that's what the fuck it is. Oh, I need more of this. And then I was just like, well, anything I didn't like about music, I would just leave it for later. Like I'll yeah, I guess I need more maturity to appreciate this shit because I can't do it right now. And I went from, I guess, from being the hardcore metal guy to just i'm jamming with gospel dudes uh-huh classical players folks I, I did a show 
I should say, I did a gig at the World Cafe where the MC was rapping his ass off. And all I can think was Tom Morello. This is going to work. Tom Morello. Uh -huh. I'm going to wall the fuck out of this situation. But I didn't have my pedal board. So I was just kind of like faking it until I made it. The yeah, drum yeah, yeah. bass is caught on real quick. And that was fucking 10 minutes of awesomeness. Wow. So wow. yeah, now I'm to the point I was like, I'm throwing myself in as much stuff as I can just to make up for all the lost time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so uh, as far as um, either Defiled Souls go or, you know, your own playing as a guitar or as a guitarist and how it's, you know, grown over the years, um, would you say like there's anything like that specifically Bronx about the sound of Defiled Souls or like your own? It's still in me. Playing? It's still in me. Yeah. This is like the driving force because after I got kicked out the band, I was just like, I can't play the songs anymore. Yeah. It's copyright infringement. And I knew that even then. I was like, yeah. I'm not trying to get sued by these bastards. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for so sure. I had to grow and change the way I wrote. Yeah. And the only way to do that is start studying scales and figuring out the chords that make the scales because that's it. That's all there is. And honestly, I got maybe... 10 songs off of that one song we used to play live. Wow. Because it's all variation now. Yeah, and sure, sure. Like, matter of fact, hold on a sec. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you want to play any, feel free to. Too many effects on right now. Like, what was it? One song we have, the Defile Soul song. <laughs> so then i couldn't do that anymore so then what happened was i was like all right i gotta take all my handicaps and my lack of knowledge and turn it into something that looks like i know what i'm doing and it just started coming out and that's when I started philosophy. That's and awesome. And that was part of the problem I had in New York. I can never find anyone that could keep up. I see, I see, I see, I see. They were too busy looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, yeah. I still get it to this day. I don't care. Yeah, sure. But it was it was just like the slow the slowest caveman progression into like I don't know a, a citizen from a utopian society. <laughs> then, when I got this pedal board last year, it came with an effect that I was looking for forever. Yeah. I was always into pitch shifting, dive bombing, weird shit, and then this happened. <laughs> And that was the sound. That was one of the sounds I had in my head for like forever. Wow. I just didn't know how to do it. Here comes a boss with like their weird ass technology that only they know how to do. And I was like, yes, that's one sound. I got like two more sounds to go and I got them all. <laughs> so wow. Um so where 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 would you like to go like on your musical journey next? I want to start doing shows in Chicago. Yeah. Like I just I just want to get a car and just go. I don't care. Yeah. Like I want to go to Europe. I want to go to Japan. I just want to see all the different music scenes. Like I want sure. to play with other people. I want to see how far can I take this cripple ass body and see what, like what I can do. Because yeah. with the way I'm playing now, it was a dream when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, it's just being around the musicians. Like you sure. can't get this. I, I spent what almost 20 years playing by myself. And then last year I just started finding people. I'm just like, what the fuck? Thank you, open mic. <laughs> if it wasn't for open mic we would not be having this conversation right now because I, I before this i was just like i got the most bitterest 
fucking shit with the past and music because it's just it's always me finding the wrong people yeah yeah now finally i leave new york go through my shit in philly and the second i get stable oh now i can go to open mics any night of the week wow i did an open mic during covid wow that was i was that was when i was in the shelter and i, I did a show i did a two-hour show in shop right in southwest philly and i wasn't prepared <laughs> it was my birthday i didn't care i was just like i made 120 bucks and that covered laundry for the month <laughs> hey that's awesome wow mm -hmm. wow um then i've done some shows at the public library and like I, right now i'm just like trying not to do too much because this shit is tiring bro. this, this yeah. getting old shit sucks and you i guess you probably got to bring your um your everything. guitar and amp everything. and everything with you, right? Everything on the bus. It's kind of like it's kind of like New York 2.0. Because I I'm huffing it, I'm struggling, I'm dealing with people. Sound techs. This is the craziest shit. I went from the drunk sound tech who got fired multiple times for the same gig to the sound tech who's doing everything on an app and doesn't know shit. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh fucking powers of me. <laughs> so my like right now my current struggle is dealing with my sound when it's not exactly how i want it yeah yeah just having a mic a, a, a amp in front of you is not the same as hearing yourself through the pa 30 feet away and i'm there thinking to myself man how the fuck the nine inch nails do what they did because like to me those guys are gods to me they're like you go you guys do a show and it's better than the record and yeah, i know that yeah. happened overnight yeah i was like what the fuck do i gotta go through to get to that that's what for i sure. want for sure like i would love nothing more than to cut a track with trent Reznor. i don't even care if it's just me doing this <laughs> i don't care, I don't care. <laughs> wow um so what what advice would you give to like you know keep kids going. these days keep going uh, don't yeah. listen to anyone. Fuck the world. Keep going. Because it's going to be that one turn you're going to make. You're going to be like, oh, shit. Finally. It's just having the patience for that day to come. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I never would have thought moving to Philly, my music career would start over. Yeah. I was getting out of New York just to just not die from paying rent. Because this 80-hour week shit by yourself, it doesn't fucking work. Yep. So much overtime. I mean, I remember I used to work so much overtime, I would only sleep on the train to and from the apartment. Take a shower, pop a Red Bull, eat some ramen noodles. All right, next shift is in like 45 minutes. Let me get my ass the fuck up. Uh-huh. And then I'll look yeah. at all my gear like, listen, I'll see you next month because it's not happening this month. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. I come That's over right. here and I'm like, I could have a place with a part-time job in a car? This just wow, might, yeah. This this might have to work. Wow, and how how long have you been in Philly now? The last seven years. Last seven years. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Um, wow. Well, is 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 there anything else you'd like to add about you know? It could be about music or it could be other aspects of your life. We covered a lot on music, but yeah. No, because honestly, I'm to the point right now. I don't have anybody in my life. Yeah. Like the cell phone is just there to tell me what email is next. Like I don't have friends. <laughs> Family's all dead. Like yeah. if anything, this is my family. Yeah, for sure. I just do whatever, get new strings, and just keep recording until this fucking EP is done, which is it's almost done. It's almost okay. done. Okay. Okay, nice. Do you have a, a title know. for it? Uh, it's all right, so it's music for the homeless. Okay. Um, one, two, and three. Three EPs, five songs a piece together makes the album. And it's gonna, uh, okay. It's going to encompass everything I went through with the homeless shelter in Philly. Yeah, yeah. So all the music I'm trying to write for it is to like get up and go. Fuck being stuck. Fuck what happened. It doesn't matter because it already happened. You can't change it. Yeah, sure, sure. So that's going to come hopefully sometime this year, the first one. I've already started playing songs live to see how people will react to it. And yeah. um, I know if I put lyrics to this, I'm going to need a band. 
Yeah, sure. Right now I'm playing to a backing track and it's not the same. Yes, yeah, that's right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and do you think you're going to put lyrics to it? If I do, I don't know. Like to me, that's the final commitment. That's the last yeah. step. And I don't yeah. know if I want my voice to do it. Yeah. I prefer someone else to do it. I don't care if I have to write the lyrics. I just don't want to fucking sing. I don't yeah. have the health to good. Like I myself, I've never had the health to perform as a singer the way I need to every single time. Yeah. So it's like, I, what am I going to kill myself for? If I could just play the guitar and have someone else sing. Yep. That's right. So I'll probably most likely do like vocals in the studio and live have it playing to a backing track so I can find someone. Yeah. But I don't see myself. No, nah, fuck that. <laughs> like I'm getting over a cold now and I don't even know from what. <laughs> <laughs> for real um well yeah so uh i guess um i have one final question for you mm -hmm. um you know unless unless there's anything else you want to add before we get to the final question okay so my final question for you um is what does the bronx represent to you struggle yeah <laughs> struggle sure. bitter, bitter yep struggle like gatekeeping and and all for nothing really yeah because i looked at it as if we weren't made poor it had been a lot better period yeah it was just the, the whole mental health drug addiction is the worst fucking combination on this goddamn planet yeah i know there was times when i had to sell my guitars to pay rent because she fucking bought pills and I'm just like, yep. you don't even have heart problems. What the fuck are you doing? And it was just, that was the whole relationship. Like, I stopped talking to her 10 years ago. Yeah. So, sure. stands, I have no idea who in my family is still alive, if they're alive, because my dad had passed away a few years ago. Yeah. And I didn't even know they got divorced until I got his death certificate. Wow. 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 So like, yeah. The family you're born with is not the family you go with. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you're in a better place in Philly and all now. Definitely sounds like a much better place for you for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it it comes with its gripes because I'm still not yeah. exactly where I want to be, but it's still better. Like this, this everything that didn't happen in New York is happening in Philly. That's why I'm just kind of yeah. like, let me shut the fuck up and just appreciate this shit because I didn't even think I was gonna live long enough to even be here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. 